purification of DNA from lambda phages. So let us look at the learning outcomes of the session. Lambda bacteriophage DNA is used as a cloning vector for many recombinant studies, thereby leading to establishing a protocol for its isolation. There, there are several protocols available for its isolation. Now the lambda phage has an infection cycle. We call it an infection cycle because all of us know that viruses cannot multiply or reproduce on their own. They need to get into a host system and within the host system they multiply. And that's the reason why it is called as an infection cycle. So the lambda phage infection cycle comprises the lytic cycle and the lysogenic cycle with the forming former, that means the lytic cycle leading to uh, getting higher amount of DNA. The strategies are basically used to either increase the biomass. So if you increase the growth of the bacteria and you have a high biomass, then there are more bacteria to get infected by the lambda phage. And so you will have more of the phage density as well. Or one could induce the lytic cycle to increase the multiplication of the DNA. Being very small in size, the phages have to be effectively collected and processed for isolation of DNA. Now let's just look at the life cycle of the lambda phages in brief. So uh, the lambda phage adheres itself or attaches itself to the host bacteria. And once it is adhering to the host bacteria or attaching to the host bacteria, it injects its DNA into the host bacteria. This DNA then multiplies inside the host bacteria by uh, using the machinery, replication machinery of the host bacteria. Once the DNA has been multiplied or while the DNA is being multiplied, uh, the, uh, the DNA of the phages are also transcri uh, transcribed and translated and so you will have the phage coats also being assembled within the bacteria. Once the phage coats are assembled, the DNA is packaged into each of the phage particle that has been formed so that there are complete phages again. Once you have complete phages formed inside the host bacteria, the host bacteria is lysed open to release the phages. So this phase is definitely showing how within the host bacteria you can have the phages multiplying. And if the phages multiply, obviously the number of DNA or the amount of DNA will also be larger. Another uh, 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 part of another uh, another part of the life cycle of lambda phages is that once the bacteria attaches itself to the host bacteria, uh, there are chances that the DNA that gets into the host bacteria does not multiply, but it gets integrated within the genome of the bacteria. And when it is integrated within the genome of the bacteria, then that phage becomes dormant. It does not multiply and such a phage is known now as a prophage. So it remains integrated, it remains dormant until you have a conducive environment for it getting back into the lytic cycle. So the lysogenic phase of the cycle can get into the lytic phase again and start multiplying, start multiplying. So these are the two phases of the life cycle of the lambda phages. Now, if the intention is to get more of the lambda DNA, then the obvious choice would be to go in for the lytic phase. Now, when you have the bac uh, bacteriophage in the lytic phase, obviously what you would have in the culture is the bacteria and the uh, bacteriophages. And when you uh, centrifuge this, you will find that the bacteria will be collected as a pellet while the phage will remain in suspension because it is much smaller in size and it does not get centrifuged to get pelleted out. So therefore, when you collect the suspension, you will get the bacteriophages, which means in this case, there is no need for uh, getting a cell extract. That means you don't need to lyse the bacterial cells to get the uh, lambda phages. You will get the lambda phages in the suspension itself. What has been observed is therefore more the number of phages are present in the suspension, more the yield of its DNA that is going to be. So if you have 10 raised to 10 
uh, lambda phages present in the suspension, you will uh, get about 500 nanogram of DNA. Now, therefore, how to increase the phage titer? One is obviously that you can uh, uh, let the bacteriophage infect a bacteria, infect bacterial population which is growing in large vats or in large uh, uh, cylinders containing 100 liter to 1000 liter of media. So, therefore, what you will have is a high biomass of the bacteria and if you have a high biomass of bacteria, there are more chances of the bacteriophages infecting the bacteria, multiplying and then getting released into the supernatant. But then one must understand that the volume in which the suspended uh, bacteriophage is, is very difficult to handle. So is there any way other than increasing the biomass, uh, increasing the phage type? So we the lambda phages are normally lysogenic. So we all know that it, it is present more as the prophage and only when a suitable environment is available, it will go into the lytic cycle. So the question that is to be asked is, can the lytic phase be induced? Because if the lytic phase can be induced, then you would get more number of lambda phages. So there is a gene that is called as CI gene that has been identified and has a role to play in integrating integrating the um, phage DNA into the bacterial DNA. So it is responsible for lysogeny. So if this CI gene is mutated, then the phage will not get integrated into the host genome. So several laboratory strains have been developed which carry the temperature sensitive CI gene. So this temperature sensitive CI gene at 30 degrees centigrade, this CITS gene is active and therefore the lambda phage will undergo what is called as lysogeny. But at 40 to 42 degrees, the CITS gene becomes inactive and therefore the lytic phase is induced. Which means that at 30 degrees centigrade, you can consider it as switched off and you will have no multiplication of DNA. But if you want multiplication of the lambda phage, then you have to put it at 42 degrees, so then it gets switched on. So this is the essence of creating the temperature sensitive uh, CI uh, lambda phage mutant. Only basic idea is to increase the phage titer. So you can see over here at 30 degrees centigrade, the bacteria will multiply. And when the bacteria multiplies, obviously the prophage will multiply. But against that, if you have 42 degrees centigrade, the phage will excise itself out, out from the genome uh, uh, DNA and the uh, excised lambda genome will now multiply and form multiple um, particles, that is lambda particles. So you can very clearly see how the number of uh, or the titer of the phages is high because of lysis, because of lytic cycle. And here it is just two compared to the many in case of lytic cycle. Now with this, the question also is, can you have or create non-lysogenic phages? So obviously the answer to that is that you need to modify the CI such that it is not functional at all or delete the CI gene completely. That could be one solution. Now, if you are able to get non-lysogenic phages, then the next catch is how to culture them to get maximum phage titer. If you have a low amount of or a low number of bacteria and you put the uh, uh, lambda phage inoculum, then what you would have is a low phage titer because you have initially itself very less bacteria and uh, an inoculum, even if it tries, you don't, the, the, the phage will have no more bacteria to infect to increase its number. So therefore, this is not an ideal situation. If the culture density is too high, again in a stipulated period of time, you would have the inoculum. So the inoculum will be comparatively less than the uh, bacteria. And so again, what you will have is not all the bacteria will be utilized to produce the bacteriophages. So again, you would have a low phage titer. But when you have the number of bacteria and the number of lambda DNA balanced out or the density is just right, then you would have a high phage titer. 
So age of the culture and size of the Faj and Aklam has to be balanced in order to get a high Faj titer when the Fajs are non-lysogenic. So once you have a high titer, the next thing that is there is from this volume, you have to get all the Faj DNA. So it is imperative that you need to concentrate the Faj DNA. If you centrifuge it, it will not settle down because these particles are very small. So therefore, a strategy that is used is polyethylene glycol is added. Polyethylene glycol is a polymer and it is able to uh, fuse or adhere to the phages. So when they adhere to the phages, what happens is aggregates of phages are formed. So they become bulkier. And now when you centrifuge it, you would get in the pellet the phages. But you would also get the cell debris because all bacteria that have been lysed will also come into the debris. Now this uh, come into the pellet. Now these phage particles are resuspended and then further processed. So the resuspended phages are subjected to deproteination as they have a protein coat only. So in phages you only have a protein coat and the DNA. So you only need to remove the protein. If you are successfully able to remove the protein then you get the DNA. So therefore, you can do a phenol chloroform to denature the DNA and now you have in the aqueous phase the DNA present. You may then just simply precipitate out with chilled ethanol or with chilled isopropyl alcohol. Of course, in this case, there are chances of getting bacterial DNA fragments as contaminants. So many a times, CSCL density gradient centrifugation can be done to get the pure phage DNA. Of course, after the uh, uh, lambda phage has been purified, the purity and the quantity assessment has to be done using UV spectrophotometry. So the conclusions are, lambda phage containing primarily DNA and protein needs to be processed to remove the protein so as to get the pure DNA. The challenges in getting large numbers of phages growing, which can be done by growing them in large vats. Phage titer can also be increased by inducing lytic phase which in turn can be done by modifying the gene which enables the integration of lambda DNA into host DNA. ETBR, CSCL density gradient or just CSCL density gradient can be, centrifugation can separate the phage DNA from other contaminants. Thus, lambda phage DNA is normally a lysogenic phase, but with simple modification in its DNA, it can be used as a cloning vector and therefore several prot protocols for its purification have been developed over the years. Thank you.